Hi everybody, my name is Elisa. Welcome back to my channel. If you've not been here before, I make my dream wardrobe from scratch. In a recent video, I took you through the process of trying to recreate a boiler suit that I saw on the show Only Murders in the Building that Selena Gomez's character wore. I fell in love with this piece ever since I saw it and I knew that I wanted to make it for myself. So in that last video, if you've not seen it, there's a link in the description. I took you through the conceptualization process. So basically just analyzing a couple pictures of the boiler suit and understanding all of its features and then I took you through the pattern drafting process. So if you've not seen that video, check the link in the description, watch it now, watch it later, however you prefer. Today, I'm gonna get into the sewing process and I'm so excited. I already cut all of my pieces from this fabric that I found, which I think is the perfect match for the spoiler suit. It is this gorgeous, pumpkin spice orange elastic denim. This denim has a really nice stretch to it sideways, so basically horizontally. It does not have a stretch vertically, which is fine because we don't need that. It should be quite hard wearing and I think the elasticity is going to make it quite comfortable as well. So I'm excited about this and I think it's gonna look really, really good. So as I said, I already cut all of my pieces. I'm gonna show you what that looked like and now let's get into the sewing of it all. So at this point, I should probably mention that when I first created the pattern in a miniature version in the video that I showed you recently, I went for a bodice without a dart because I wanted to show you how to create a bodice with a t-shirt for a boiler suit like this, which would totally work. When I created the pattern to scale for myself though, I decided to go with a dart because I thought it would be a nice extension of the seam that is going up the center front of the legs all the way up to the shoulder. So there's one long seam down the body, which I thought looked nice. So when I decided to do that, I also thought it was going to be a good idea to hide a dart in that seam. So the bodice for it looks like this now. Pretty simple, it's just a basic bodice with a shoulder dart, which I have a video for to how construct like this, I'm gonna link it in the description box. All right, so we have a number of bigger and smaller pieces here. I am going to start out with assembling the front and back trousers because we have these seams down the middle. So those have to be sewn together first. I then have to attach the pocket to the one side of my front panels. At that point, I will probably be able to assemble the entirety of the trousers. So I'm gonna start with that. See, I know for a fact that when I bought this fabric, I also bought a zip, two zippers even, because I didn't know which one to choose, and sewing thread. But I do not have the slightest clue where I put all of this. It's a little frustrating. <laughs> I do have two sewing threads here, which are not entirely the same color, but they seem to blend in really good with the orange. So on sewing thread, I'm fine. And I don't need the zip immediately, so I don't have to freak out about it. But I'm really curious where all of this went. Gremlins, maybe. The first thing I have to do is to obviously remove the paper pattern and then pin together the pieces accordingly along this straight seam that's going down the middle of my leg pieces. So I'm going to start with the back. I'm going to remove these. I'm simply going to grab two pieces and move them together like this accordingly. I created notches here along my hip line so I can line up everything nicely, making sure right sides are facing each other. And now I start pinning. Okay, so the first part of the back legs is pinned together and the dart that we incorporated into the seam is nicely hidden away. Let's continue with the other pieces. All right, so all the pieces are pinned together for the trousers, and that means I can sew the first couple of seams. Let's go. I have now assembled the individual trouser parts. So this is one back piece. We have a seam here now, looking good. So we have 
four individual trouser pieces. Up next, I am going to serge all of these seams with my serger and I'm going to press it probably into the back, so towards the center back, and then I'm going to top stitch it once more from the outside to give it a really nice and clean look. And I can do this because I still have enough seam allowance in the side seam, so in case the trousers turn out a little snug, I can still take some ease out of the seam allowances on the side seams. I don't really need the seam allowance. And it's gonna be harder for me to finish off these seams once everything is assembled, so I'm gonna do it before I assemble all of the trousers. So let's go. just sewn together all of my individual pieces so I have two front pants and two back pants now these are my back pants and what you do next is you place the two panels on top of each other so that the right sides are facing along the crotch line like this so this is the center back crotch line right here and I'm going to pin this together now and I'm now going to sew along the crotch front part is sewn together as well and the part where the zip is going to go in stays open. I think what I have to do next is to sew the pockets in. Now the pockets look like this. We have one side which is the same diagonal as the pocket entry and then this is the other side which is going to be the outside facing part of the pants that is currently missing here. First I'm grabbing the two pieces and I'm placing them right sides onto my trouser panels like this and then I am going to pin them along this diagonal pocket entrance. The first thing we need to do is sew along these diagonals. Then I'm going to go ahead and top stitch this again with the seam allowance facing into the pocket. Once that is done, I can fold the pocket entrance over like this. So I have a clean look and I'm going to place a few needles along here just so that everything stays put. I then have to fold the pocket so that the side seam of the trouser and the side seam of the pocket match up like this. And then here we can see that the edge of the pocket matches up with the seam that we have here. And that's exactly what we want. So I'm just gonna place a pin here so that stays in place. And I'm probably first going to sew the edge of the pocket by simply serging it. And then this side of the pocket is going to be closed when we actually sew together the front and the back of the trousers. I'm gonna place a few pins here and then I'm simply going to add a basting stitch along this edge so everything stays put in the process of assembly. So you can see the pocket is now on the inside and we have a clean entrance. It's quite deep, which I like. So that's the pocket. Repeating this on the other side. front trousers are assembled with the pockets in, the back trousers are assembled, so I think we are ready to assemble the back of the front. Let's try. Alright, so the way to go is we need to place the front so that we have easy access to the inner leg seam here, like this. We can then grab the back, right sides touching onto the front so that the two crotch seams meet. Ideally, I would want to go ahead and serge this already, but because I don't know if this is actually going to fit, I'm not going to serge it right away because if I make a mistake and I need to alter the fit of this, then it's going to be really hard for me to do so if I've already serged this part. So I'm not going to serge it. I'm going to pin together the inner leg seams first on both sides. I'm then going to pin together the outer leg seams on both sides. I'm gonna do all of this with a stitch length of five so I can try the trousers and make alterations because the likelihood of me not having to make any alterations is really low. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start in the middle at the crotch seam, sewing down one seam, starting here again and sewing down the other seam.
So here we are, the trousers are assembled and they are very big, which is partially intended, but I do think, so what I love about them, let's start here, is that the dart in the back is hidden in this decorative seam. This just looks great and it feels very good as well. So I like that. I like that the trousers have this carrot character, like a carrot jeans, which um, the original design has as well. But you can see here, there's a lot of width here, which doesn't look so great. So I will take the trousers in around my hip area here by a good amount that hopefully also counteracts this insane width from the side. So this is my leg and this is how far the pants square up from there, which is fine. As again, I wanted it to be chunky and bulky, but I need to take them in a little bit on the side at least. So I'm gonna take in a little here and also a little on the inner, inner seam. And then I think I'm happy with these. And then I will call it a day. All right, good morning. So I just woke up, did my hair, did my makeup, and now I'm gonna continue with the trousers. I finished them yesterday. They look like this now. So the pockets are in, everything is clean and tidy on the inside. I took in the legs of the trousers as well, as I announced yesterday in my last clip. So they are looking good. The only thing I haven't actually done is to attach the pocket on the side of the leg because I actually forgot to cut them. Luckily, I have a little bit of fabric left, but I'm gonna keep that for later. I think now I'm gonna continue with the bodice. So I'm gonna assemble the front of the bodice at the princess seam. I'm going to add the dart into the back. Then I'm gonna join front and back at the shoulder. And at that point, I can consider adding in the extension for the extension for the shoulder, which is kind of gonna go in here and adding in the sleeve. So all of that is fairly simple. Let's see how long it's gonna take me. So I just sewed the front pieces and now I have a really, really nice curve to them. So it's basically also like a hidden dart. And now I'm going to add the pleats and the dart in the back. So for the dart, I'm just gonna try and transfer the end point to both sides. I can remove the paper pattern and I can find the dart by folding the piece like this. It's a very narrow dart, it's just 1.5 centimeters. I'm just gonna place pins like this. A straight line here so I can follow it and it's even. Okay, some darts are in. Now for the pleats in the back, I added a total of six centimeters. And now I want to close probably the first quarter of the pleat above the bottom and the top. So I can then press it down and it just opens when I move around, basically. So that's the idea for pin. So basically, I'm just gonna sew this shut here. Okay. So now when we open this, our true center back is revealed and I will now have to take this to my iron and press the pleat down so it is only opening when I move around. So we have like a hidden little detail in here. The back now is completed. It has this pleat in here that I was talking about. And now I can add my front pieces at the shoulder. I'm placing each side so that the right sides are facing each other. And now I just sew the shoulders. And now we have a bodice that kind of looks like one as well. And it's ready for the sleeves to go in. All right, so before I can insert the sleeves, I have to make these little, little wings that I'm gonna add to the shoulders. So I have four layers of this shape which means two for each shoulder that I'm going to overturn with each other. We are now well prepared to go into this next phase of the construction process. I have prepared these little wingies that are gonna go into the shoulder and now I can put the sleeve in. The sleeves look like this. 
and here we have the box. Now to get a really really crisp and clean result I am going to put the sleeves in before actually closing the side seams. So I'm gonna place one armhole in front of me like this and I'm gonna grab one layer of these pieces and one of these little wings here. Now the wings are supposed to look like this so they have to go in right sides touching with the bodice and I'm gonna give myself a little notch here in the midpoint so I actually know have something to orient myself with. So the wing goes in here. So I'm first gonna pin in this piece. Okay, so this is then basically what that little wing looks like. Not bad, I like it. It's more pronounced than in the original piece because in the original piece this is just cut on to that second panel of the, of the bodice but it kind of emulates what we're trying to achieve. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to base this in for starters. Okay, so now that this first layer is in, I have this little wing here now, we can now add the sleeve and I'm going to just open this armhole again so I face it like this and I grab my sleeve and just have a quick think about how it's supposed to go and so it's, go, it's supposed to go in like this which means right side's touching with the bodice and I'm again going to start at the shoulder. Okay, so now the sleeve is pinned in and we should now be able to sew this in. I'm again doing this with a base because we don't yet know where this is taking us. I don't yet know if my armhole is going to be big enough. So repeating the process with a basting stitch. Okay, so now that this is sewn in, we can turn the jacket inside out, or the bodice, it's not a jacket, and then try and find the points to meet. And then we can pin together the side for the first time. All right, so this is not bad. I do like the shoulder. I think it looks really good. But I think it would be more comfortable if I lowered the armhole a little bit because you can see that it's um it's pretty close. It's pretty close. So I do think I will open up the armhole a little bit more and then put all that in again. But I kind of proved the concept. Now I know it works and I can just redo it in my own time, which is not today because I have a friend over and I'm going to spend some time with them now. So. See you next time I'm sewing on this. Ah, guys, I don't know if you know how I feel, but I just said goodbye to a very dear friend um, who was here staying with us for a few days and, well, for a whole week, actually. And I don't know if you know how that feels, but I feel spent and replenished at the same time. I had such a great time, but at the same time, we went out every night, we drank and ate a lot. And I don't know, maybe it's age. I just don't feel like I can do this anymore <laughs> for a long period of time. So all that is to say that I'm tired today. I'm tired and um, I'm glad that I can have a day to myself just doing what I love most, which is, you know, creating. I think I might potentially be able to finish off this project today and I'm very excited about it. So I don't know if you can see in the background. I think you should be able to tell. The top is assembled all except the collar and the trousers are assembled as well. So I'm thinking the next step that I'm going to do is to actually join the top and the bottom together because I am going to add the collar and the breast pockets and the trouser pockets after actually having added the center front closure, which is basically going to be a long extended fly zip. That's the plan. I already have a zipper. I'm curious what you think about this. So they obviously didn't have a zip that matched the color of, of that spoiler suit. So I thought, why not go completely contrasting? I didn't want to go for all white. So I chose this latte color. I don't know what this is, like it's a beige, um, but it looks kind of nice next to the, to the orange and it kind of gives it a very different vibe. So I'm curious what that's going to look like. I have this, I have everything I need. So I hope that I can finish this today. So let's try our best. All right, so this is an exciting moment. I have my trousers here and I have my top here. And these two things need to find together somehow. I also have this piece of the pattern here, which is the tunnel that is going to become the belt. Now this tunnel is 
10 centimeters in total with plus seam allowance, 70 centimeters long. My idea is that I'm gonna finish the front of this, I'm gonna stitch it over twice, and I'm then going to pin it into the waist right away. Once that is sewn, I'm gonna fold it up like this, I'm gonna fold it once down, but then at that point I can decide how high I really want that part, that tunnel to be. I can fold it over once again, and then this creates the tunnel where the belt is going to go in. That is the idea. I hope it's going to work out. What I am going to do is to take a few measurements, make sure that this is the same circumference as this, and then I can decide how long this eventually has to be. Join top and bottom. So this is gonna go up here. Before I do that, I'm going to try on this thing and see what it looks like. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. This is one of those where you just don't know what it's gonna look like until it's finished. This looks really funny to me. The sleeves are obviously too short right now, but the cuffs are gonna go on here, so they're gonna be longer. This belt looks like it's very high on my torso but i also hope that that's gonna work out because i don't really know what to do about that i can't really make the top longer than it currently is it's gotta stay like it is what's super nice about this fabric is it is so elastic and that makes for a really comfortable fit which is great so there's no you know when i do this obviously it is a bit short but because it's elastic it's not it doesn't hurt so it's the perfect length at the moment so I guess I just have to go on. <laughs> okay, so now that I've prepped everything, I can have a think about how I'm gonna stitch the top down up here. All right, so we have reached the point where we can insert the zipper into the center front. As I said, this is going to be a fly zipper. I find that there's nothing easy about fly zippers and I, for the life of me, cannot explain it to you. I have now watched three or four videos on how to insert this thing into the boiler suit. I have done this before, but it just doesn't seem to stick. So I don't think I'm in a, in a position to teach you how to do it because I can't do it. I have to follow a tutorial. I'm gonna link the tutorial I'm using for this below so you can follow the steps I'm taking. I cannot talk about this now, I need brain space and I need to try to figure this out. So let's hope for the best. Apologies, though my boyfriend is currently doing vacuuming. This is where we are at. I am happy it's in. Is it perfect? No, do we mind? A little bit, <laughs> but it will do. And nobody except myself will probably notice that it's not perfect. That's what I tell myself. So it looks great from the outside. Come on, open, hold on. It looks great from the outside. On the inside, not so much. So we will need some facing here because when I wear this open here, not close to the top, this is gonna show this not probably because it's or maybe like this so I will add facing to both sides so the ugly overlocking isn't so visible oh, so I have to do that now hello dears it is a new day it's the end of a work day for me and of course I did not finish the jumpsuit yesterday I don't know why I thought that I would because entering a zip and doing it in a fly zipper construction is always a hassle for me so that took me way longer than it should have but it is done thank goodness it's done so the state of affairs is that we're missing the collar we're missing the breast pockets we're missing the cuffs we're missing the pockets on the legs and we're missing the hem of the legs. Those are the things that still need to be done. I'm not gonna give an estimate here because clearly I'm really bad at estimating how long things take me. The next thing I'm going to tackle though is the collar. Now I do have a concern with the collar. I, in the conundrum of making the center front fly zipper, forgot to overturn my little pieces up here to give them a nice corner. They're not overturned, they look a bit wonky and they do need some love. So my options are either to do my best 
and overturn them like this and hand sew them shut. That is an option, like this. And then attach the collar until here, which is where it's supposed to go. That's actually a very good idea, I just came up with this. The other option is to give the collar a, a band, a collar band, which I don't think I want to do because it gives the collar a complete different appearance. It's more like a shirt collar. And I don't think I want to do that. So I'm gonna try to cheat a little bit and do what I just explained and see how that goes. So let's see. Okay, so let's assemble this collar by simply opening it, adding a few pins. I think I will do what I always do, although I feel lazy. I'm just gonna cut back one layer a little bit. The smaller collar, on the bigger collar, the smaller collar is the under collar, and then I'll pin it together. Okay, so I have now overturned the collar. I've also understitched the seam allowance, so we have the nice finish on the outside and the seam is not coming out or too visible. We have a crisp edge, good. Now, let's hope that we can actually pin this in so it reaches from this end to this end fully. That is my hope. I can't believe it, but I think I did it. There's a single pleat in here and the collar reaches point to point. How exciting! That now means I need to have a play here to fold this over nice and neat so there's nothing here that looks terrible. I'll do this specifically by hand. Once that first part is done, I will top stitch the collar closed to finish it off and then the collar is in. Let's go. All right, so I've pinned in the collar and I decided to close the inner seam by hand later. And I'm also going to sew this down by hand later as well while watching some TV. But before I do that, I'm going to attach the breast pockets, I'm thinking. So for that, I need to prepare them first. These are the individual pocket pieces. So we have two pocket bodies and we have four layers for two flaps. I'm calling them flaps. I don't know what they're called. Each. So these I will overturn with each other first and then I'll take this to my iron. I use the paper pattern as a guide and then I'm going to press all of this so it's the right size. Okay, so first it's about the placement of the pockets, so I'm placing the jumpsuit in front of me and then I'll have a first glance at what's happening here. I'm going to orient myself on this seam here, which is probably hard to see for you, that holds down the zipper facing and this line here to determine the height of it and I'm just gonna pin it in place on one side first. So it's on the jumpsuit for one side, and now I need to mimic the placement on the other side.
Okay, it is quite late. I don't want to sit on my desk anymore. So the pockets, the breast pockets are on, the collar is in, needs to be stitched shut by hand as well as the facing for the inside of the zipper. So I'm going to do all this handwork now while watching the last episode of season one of Only Murders in the Building. I kind of caught up on, on the season while sewing this, I kind of felt in the mood. So that's what I'm going to do today. And then what's left to do is the cuffs, the belt, the pockets on the legs and the hem, which isn't that much. So I've been working on this now for how many days? About five, five days. So this is a big project. Yeah, but I think it will be worth it. So let's see. Does it matter anymore? So let's see what's about to happen here. The thing is, how will I go in here and at the same time move the layer under my pocket away? This is the most difficult part of it all and I'm not certain I will succeed. Okay, let's see. This doesn't look bad at all. It did work out. Oh my gosh. All right, pockets are on the legs, and now I can attach the cuffs, hopefully. Placing one cuff in front of me, and then I'm going to suss out how I want to attach it. So I'm simply going to pin one side of the situation. I'm going to start on the inside because then I can stitch the cuff shut from the outside and have a clean look on the outside, which is important. All right, so the cuff is attached from the inside. The inside is looking good. The outside is still open. I'm going to take this to my iron. I'm going to fold this in and under. I'm gonna add a few pins, I'm gonna top stitch this closed and I'm gonna repeat the same process with the other cuff and then I'm gonna do my hem and then I'm done. guys so this is it what do you think i know this was a super long video but i just feel i wasn't able to capture the whole process of this without making it a little bit longer so to all of you who made it till the end hats off let me know what you think about how this turned out in the comments i love it i mean i have to say i do i think it's really cool it's a cool piece i'm happy with it i think i'll wear it out a lot what would i change if i were to do it again i would probably make the sleeves bulkier just to give them a more relaxed fit. And I would probably also make the torso a little bit longer, just a smidge, maybe two centimeters. Oh, and then the biggest thing, I would definitely change the center front closure. I don't think it has to be a fly zip closure. It can simply be a very simple zip construction with a flap on top of it. I think that would totally work. It doesn't have to be a fly zip and it would probably make the cleaning up of the inside easy as well. So that's a learning I'm gonna take away from this. And that's it, that's it for today. Next time I will most likely work on one of the two fabric godmother fabrics that I bought recently. I'm gonna put up a poll for you guys to let me know which one you wanna see first. So looking forward to that and see you next time.